After selling the gold coins he got from the quest to a jewelry shop, he got paid 1,240,000 won, or 1,070 US dollars. Even though he still cannot believe what happened, he is still thankful since he earned money from that weird encounter. But because he earned money, it means the killing he did and the cut he received were all real too. While watching his hand shiver from the thought of killing someone, his phone suddenly rang. S-O-S-E, the job hunting site that led him to get paid, is the one who called him. Khan nervously answered the call. He is greeted by a stern voice. He wonders how they got his name. It seems Kong forgot he filled out a form. They are asking if he is free today. He questioned them as to why. It turns out all new members will have a short meeting, and it would be nice for him to attend. Khan decided to attend the meeting even though it felt like he had made a deal with the devil. But he really wants to know what happened yesterday, that why he needs to attend. After arriving at the sixth floor where the meeting will be held, Khan is greeted by a pink-haired woman. He clarifies that this is the office of SOSE. The girl assures him that he is in the right place and asks him to follow her to the conference room. Based on the voice of the girl, Khan surmised that she was the one he was talking to over the phone. But he decided to keep his cool and proceed normally. He complimented the girl on her looks, and she replied by asking him what he was expecting. He thought about something devilish. The girl said that who would wear something mischievous like that? adding that it is not stylish at all. Khan got surprised because it looks like she read his mind. He did not get a chance to think more about it because they were already in front of the conference room. But before Khan entered, she told him that the gold he sold to the jewelry shop was a tad bit undervalued. Khan was surprised because this happened just an hour ago, and that they are capable of sending people to other dimensions, which makes reading, people's minds and tracking what they do on a daily basis is a piece of cake already. The girl shoved Khan into the room, where he is met with a girl who is the site administrator and CEO of SOSC and looks like a celebrity. Khan said his greetings and wants to clarify if what he did is similar to selling his soul in their transaction, she said. That he is not entirely wrong with this assumption and that everything he went through is real in a certain degree. But she added that what happened yesterday is just a tutorial of what is about to come, given that he is only a beginner. She can only provide this much information. She also said that he should take what happened yesterday as a learning experience, and that it is just a dry run of what new employees are going to undergo. Khan asked for clarifications about what she said on top of asking if he got picked out randomly. The girl assures Khan that they do not approach people like that. She also added all the misfortune that fell to Khan, such as the dead of his friend listed on his name and the unfortunate accident that happened to his mother that put her into a coma adding more fees to pay. They knew Khan through and through, which alarmed him very much. Khan felt unsafe for his family, but the CEO reassured him that they would be safe. He asked her again what she wanted from him. Ms. Wu simply wants him to go back to the fantasy world. Khan finds their motives unreasonable and questions if he should still follow their order. Miss Wu denied his assumptions and says she does not seek to manipulate him whatsoever. She mentions some words to Khan, asking if he is familiar with them. The CEO goes on saying that Parson's quest was a low tier F and that joining the siege is enough to complete the mission, but noticing that Khan went further to loot the castle, which added up to his rewards, and also getting recognition from the higher-ups, allowing him to get a bonus from his rewards, Khan suddenly remembers his previous actions. Miss Wu says that he has a delicate mind, but given the fact that it was the reason that led to his decision to sign that contract, Miss Wu added that a client would be more gratified if he or she were to successfully complete the quest. Khan had a feeling that if he could have about 1,600,000 won per gold coin. The CEO went on saying it only depends on the client's payout, and that being a millionaire overnight is also possible based on his accountability. He asks if there are any penalties after failing the mission or dying, and Miss Wu says that if he dies, there will be no issues whatsoever. Kong is relieved, however, she told him that he can't make excuses because he'll only damage his profile during the process, and that their clients are as valuable as the one he possesses. Adding to that, if he fails to complete the mission, his level will be in danger and could possibly go down. Kong asked if that is all. Miss Wu follows along with a question about the percentage of the reward in his tutorial. Kong said that it was 1%, and she asked if it was 100% instead. 
He was surprised with the thought that he could have won over 100 million won, or approximately $86,000. Miss Wu goes on to say that the reward is dependent on the client's level of the mission and that he will be rewarded handsomely if he succeeds. This gets Kong excited while he says to her that he could have gotten 100 million won had he been at a higher level. But before doing anything else, he snaps and stops for a moment. Khan stopped and thought about what happened yesterday. And if he is just going to forget that it happened, he hates himself because that much money is enough to sway his choices. Miss Wu told Khan that thinking about it even further will not solve anything. And if he looks at the bigger picture, Parsons was able to go home in one piece because of him. She told him to look at things in a different perspective where getting money is akin to surviving in this world which in turn makes it a basic instinct. Miss Wu added that there is a new campaign that was recently added. She asks if Kong is interested. He is free to decline and they will not force him to do anything. Kong asked what he needed to do. But she said that he has to find that out for himself. He got dizzy while getting teleported to his next mission. After his vision cleared, he saw a man who has an axe that took a swing at him. Thankfully, this man is an ally. He asked him to be careful and to stay focused because he had just triggered an arrow trap. The man boasted that he just saved our protagonist's life from the poison arrow. That is when he realized that the swing was meant to save him not kill him. More men is next to them. They told the man equipped with the axe whose name is Sampat that he also triggered a trap. They find the little situational awareness of their boss amusing. Kong is being filled with the memory of the night. These men are here to help him to find something and assist him in finding someone inside the labyrinth. Suddenly, a status window appeared. In this campaign, his name is Uriival Pilshin, 24 years old. His mission is to find the son of Count Raleigh, Leopold. Khan got slightly annoyed because he was under the impression that this was not a game, and that the status window broke his expectations. Then we can see the CEO explaining the concept of dimension traveling. She explained that, Mr. Khan will still look like him to his eyes. But to those around him they will see who the original person was. Miss Wu prefers Khan to stay in character and treat the people around him based on how the original person would treat them. Khan felt bad about the thought of killing another person and worried about the consequences if he failed to complete his mission. He thought to himself that next time he should put more thought into the contract before accepting another campaign. But with all of the responsibilities he has to shoulder. This action could be necessary for his family to survive. Kong straightens his thoughts and focuses on his task ahead. The memories of Uriival are an information overload for him. But the only thing he is sure of is that he has to succeed and return home at all costs. Uriival introduced himself on his new adventure. He was a son of a minor knight's house and from the day he was born, he worked tirelessly just to become a knight like his father. But after the day his mother died, his life took a tragic turn. He went back to his home to find his father and told him to stop his drinking addictions. After his mother's death, his father turns to drinking and his sister is young and very sick. He thought to himself that he'd save them from this ruin. And without other choice, he enlisted in the war and earned achievements throughout all the victories. But knowing that without proper connections, his position will likely be filled by someone. Now feeling hopeless and without hope to save his family from the grieving challenges of life, a ray of light shines down upon him. The Lord mentions that his son hasn't returned yet and that he went on an adventure in the labyrinth, but has been gone too long. He asks the knight if he can bring his son back. Yuri Val, with a hopeful look on his face, has taken it as a chance to finally save his family. Khan had woken from his dream and saying it had been playing your rival's memories over and over. He couldn't sleep and because of it, he developed the trait insomnia. Khan realized something. He finds it weird that Parson's situation with his family is somehow similar to his. Looking back to his past life, he noticed that he also shares the same characteristics as they do. Khan remembered Miss Wu's words reminding him that he should treat this world as his own. It's almost as if it was a reminder for him to be in control of his actions. Khan suddenly hears a noise in the distance. Like the sound of steel clashing. He gets up and notices that one of his comrades, Pazel, has gone missing. Khan woke up his team and a goblin-looking creature jumped on him. But a man, with black hair dashed to the scene and smacked it away. Another three showed up but were completely obliterated by a man with a single swing. He catches his breath but a larger monster appears behind him. He turns around but is scared and helpless. 
Kong jumped on the large, ugly monster from behind stabbing it through its nape. After the orc died, Yuri Vel checked up on his teammates. Sampa told Pazel that this is what happens if he sleeps around the job, and that he might have brought a lot of monsters with him. He insisted that it happened purely by accident. The boss is intrigued and wants to hear what happened thoroughly. Kong suggested that they put it aside and deal with what is in front of them now. Sampat exclaimed that they should start acting like mercenaries now and do their job, as the charge towards the horde of monsters. A battle ensued and while this was happening, Khan thought about the days they spent in the dungeon based on the memory of Yurival, and that in their four days of journey inside the labyrinth, this is the first time they encountered a monster. He is also wondering why the movements of others are dull. Yuri Val surmised this is because they are used to fighting humans in a war and not monsters inside a labyrinth, and that they are only here because he, Yuri Val, asked them to. After finishing the monster in front of him he offered to help their marksman, Caden by assisting him to get to higher ground. With the marksman aiding them properly through the better vantage point he is in, it made the fight against the horde more manageable. He is able to take down large orcs with one arrow. Meanwhile, Sampat is getting crowded by the smaller orcs. He asked for your rival's help but he is also busy dealing with orcs himself, so he suggested that Sampak just use his brute force. Against all of them at the same time instead of dealing with them one by one, Yuri Val also asked the others to assist him. Sampak charged through the small orcs wrapping up the whole fight. As they gathered around, Caden cracked a joke saying that Yuri Val is better at leading them than Sampak. The boss agreed to this joke while looking somewhat uncomfortable. But it seems he did not understand that Caden is only joking. Yurival noticed the distress in the face of Sampit adding that he looks really pale as a ghost and that he is sweating too much. Sampit tells them he is fine but at the same time he fell to the ground. Yurival told everyone to lay the boss down and check him for any injuries because he might be poisoned. Suddenly a pop-up window appeared in front of him that is giving him a side quest. After seeing their wounded leader, Yuri Val gets a pop-up message from the quest panel saying he now has to ensure the safety of his members. Not only that but he also gets a bonus for finishing the quest. Yuri Val goes to his party members and asks them to bring out the medicine to find a way to cure Sampit's poisoning. Caden finds his wound and says he's been grazed by the poison arrow. He turns him to his side and tries to suck out the poison from the wound. Yuri Val immediately tells him to stop and that he'll also put himself in the same position as Sampit. Yuri Val tells them to hold him down then puts his hands near the wound and gently presses on it in order to squeeze out the poison. Sampit shouts in pain. Yuri Val tells him to take deep breaths and tells him that he'll only be in more pain if he keeps moving around. A man with the medicine and alcohol brought them to Yuri Val. But he interjected and said that the alcohol would only cause the poison to speed up its process of spreading. He instead asked for the canteen to better clean the wound. The two looked with regret in their past decisions, saying that their methods were the cause of the previous deaths. Yuri Val recalls a few details about treating poison and now he has to administer an antidote. But he stops for a moment and feels that something might be off. He remembers a memory from a moment when he used the wrong medicine and that his rush to things led to the death of his comrade. Caden asks Yuri Val to make the antidote before Sampit dies. He thinks about it for a moment and asks the two of them if the bottle he's using is for the poison or venom. They looked unsure at first but Caden said he only bought it because it was cheap. Yuri Val keeps the bottle for now and looks in the bag to find something else. He finds a medicinal herb that he says it has antibacterial properties and decides to use it instead. He places it on Sampit's wound and tells Caden it's okay to lift him up. Yuri Val tells him that he's going to bandage him and bear with the pain a little longer. After that, they laid him down and left him to rest until he recovered. But knowing their leader, he'll quickly get back up on his feet in no time. The two laughed it off. Yuri Val calls Pazel and asks him how they ended up in this situation. The other two also asked him what he did and why he was awake in the middle of the night. Pazel took out his map and showed it to his party. He told them that the direction to the stairs that lead to their next destination was nowhere to be found and says that he's been looking all over for it. They got lost looking for stairs and the guide who is tasked to lead them the way is confused trying to make something out of the map. He stepped on a pressure plate, activating several traps. It made him run for his life. He ran as fast as he could to escape, which exhausted him. That is when he crossed paths with the horde. After a short silence, the others beat Pazel up since they almost died because of his mistake. 
Yurival suggested that he try again, but the two of them will go this time. As the two of them left, they approached the area where the stairs is supposed to be. Pizel suggested that maybe the map is wrong and the cartographer got confused since it's a labyrinth map. Yurival asked him where did he got the map. They got it along with the supplies provided by Count Raleigh. There has to be a stairs here going down further according to the map. But there is nothing. Pizel checked a lot of times already. Humoring Yurival by saying that the stairs could not have grown legs and walked away. Suddenly Khan noticed something. The floor is supposed to be worn out from all the travelers and adventurers that have walked across it. This issue is only here where the stairs is supposed to be. And the stalagmites are not pointy. Yurival told him to look up. And there's the stairs they are looking for. The surprised Pizel exclaimed that the stairs is on the ceiling. And Yurival thought that this is obviously done using magic. Kong reviewed the memories of Yurival looking for a way to dispel magic. He threw the sword to the ceiling which dispelled the magic and now the stairs is somewhere they can access. Pizel cannot believe that they got lost just because of magic. Yurival sums up everything he knows. Count Raleigh provided the map and he is sure that his son is in this dungeon. Leading him to believe that the son was not out adventuring in the dungeon and that he might have been tasked by his father to go somewhere inside before leaving. He recalled the memory from when he talked with the Count that even if his child is dead you should at least retrieve the signet ring. Yurival thought that for the count. The retrieval of the signet ring is more important than his son coming back. He now has doubts about this mission. And he felt like things were not going the way he thought it would. Thanks for staying in tune with our manga recap. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button for more updates from our content.